If you're like me and you're wondering what exactly is .NET MAUI, then this is the video for you. Check out as Maddie comes on and lets us know what .NET MAUI is, what we can do with it, and what are some of the things that we can expect between now and .NET 6. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of the On.NET Show. My name is Cecil Phillip, and today we're going to be learning about .NET MAUI and what exactly it's bringing to developers. And here I have my good friend Maddie, who's going to tell us all about it. So Maddie, why don't you introduce yourself? I don't think you've been on the show before, so why don't you tell folks who you are and what do you do? Yeah, I don't think I have either. I'm very excited. Um, I watch the show all the time. So I am Maddie. Awesome. I am a PM on the Xamarin slash .NET MAUI team. It's hard to introduce myself now because... It used to just be Maddie on the Xamarin team, and now it's Maddie on the .NET MAUI team. More words. But uh, oh. I'm the developer productivity PM. So I like to uh, consider myself the person who hopefully makes our Xamarin and .NET MAUI developers more productive in their day-to-day -day while they're writing their mobile and desktop apps. Nice. And now I remember when we announced MAUI, I think it was last year, maybe the year before that. And I was like, this sounds really cool, but I have no idea what it is. So I'm hoping you could shed some light on that for me. Like, what is Maui? Like, how does it relate to the to Xamarin Forms and the rest of Xamarin? And as a as a, a non-mobile developer, and even as a mobile developer in the .NET space, what are some of the things that I could expect as we kind of you know take the journey over to Maui? Yeah, those are all awesome questions. I have some slides. I don't have any demos yet. You're gonna have That's to wait fun. until a little bit later in the spring for that. But um, I do have plenty of slide contents with words that I can happily talk to, to hopefully explain some of those things. Um, one of the biggest questions that we've gotten from customers is the first question you had, which is like, how does it relate to Xamarin Forms, right? Um, .NET MAUI is the evolution of Xamarin Forms. So internally, I've been calling it like Xamarin 6 or Xamarin V Next, but because it is extending from mobile to desktop, we think that Xamarin Forms is like almost too limiting of a title for it. So that's why we're branding it as .NET MAUI. It's this .NET multi-platform app UI. That is what MAUI stands for. Um, and we've rebuilt our UI controls from the ground up so that they are not only more performant, but also more extensible. So you don't just have to build them the way that we've always built Xamarin and Xamarin Forms apps, but you know, there's, there's more, even more programming models we'll be able to hook into in the future. Okay, so no, in, a, in a past life for me, I, I did dabble in Xamarin Forms just a little bit. And I remember Xamarin Forms did support, like, was it EWP and it supported um, uh, Mac desktop and those types of things. So, so what's the difference between what we had before and then what we're moving to now? Yeah, so we've always supported UWP kind of out of the box with Xamarin Forms, but it's kind of always lagged behind. Um, and that's because... The Xamarin Forms controls and layouts were really built for the orientation of a mobile phone, right? Um, so like I have my phone here, it's very vertical. You know, it's got a, yeah. a height that is much larger than its width. Um, and then when you look at a desktop, it's flipped. So it's like you know, 1080 by whatever it is, sure. or 1440, whatever it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, so like when you, when you design a mobile app, a lot of times it's stacked vertically. When you design a desktop app, a lot of times it's a grid or it's horizontal and all those things. Um, and so it was hard for us to kind of make this one size fits all solution for both mobile and desktop. And that's still a challenge we're facing, but because of the way that Blazor has been working and the need for Blazor developers to start to target desktop, we realized that there are some things we can do in the desktop space that don't involve like re-ideating how rendering works. Um, mm -hmm to actually bring a lot of value to .NET developers all up in the desktop space with a blend of both .NET MAUI and Xamarin Forms controls and also with web and all the projects that we have going on there. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I have I have a slide that shows some of the architecture. This is the, the pre-Blazor slide. Um, you mentioned Mac. So Mac OS was uh, supported in Xamarin, but Xamarin Forms was always kind of like, it would work, but your mileage may vary. Uh, we're bringing Mac into the first party story here. Um, and we're actually targeting specifically Mac Catalyst, which you might be familiar with. It's their like iPad slash iPhone slash Mac cross-platform. I Forgive me for saying this, but it's kind of like their UWP. 
I'm sure someone <laughs> <at> Apple <Right. laughs> like that. Right. Um, but it's, it's really awesome. It supports, you know, like split um, or side by side on iPads and the controls are all the same. It's their right once run anywhere on iOS or iPad OS or um, Mac OS. So it's like there's Xamarin forms for Mac products, pretty much. There you go. Great way to put it. Um, <laughs> and we're pulling in WinUI 3 as our Windows backend. So it's been UWP, but now we're, we're pulling in WinUI because um, that's really where you know Windows is going with their UI stacks. And it's decoupled from the actual Windows version you're running on. Um, but yeah, it's all part of .NET 6. So if you're an existing Xamarin or Xamarin Forms developer, you use .NET Standard. Um, you use the mono runtime for everything. Mono is getting folded into .NET and the core, um, the base class library there and all that. So mm -hmm. it's all kind of becoming this like one big happy family where you have a very small .NET 6 package you install, and then you can pull in mobile, you can pull in web, you can pull in desktop, blah, 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 blah. And .NET MAUI is the way that you make your cross-platform native UI for what we call client applications. So that's really desktop and mobile, things that don't run on the web. Um, yeah. So then if I'm a Xamarin Forms developer, like this should feel pretty similar to me, right? I yeah. remember you did say like the controls were rewritten and I'm, I'm guessing there's some, some API changes there as well. But like in terms of me having to relearn a new set of skills, I'm guessing it shouldn't be too hard for me to like make that transition over from Xamarin Forms as it exists today over to .NET MAUI whenever .NET 6 comes up. Yeah, we are actually anticipating for most modern Xamarin Forms apps, there will be very, very, very little migration work you have to do. Um, the only thing that we can guarantee you'll have to change is your CS proj file. And that's just because you have to move to a new SDK version. You have to move from .NET standard to .NET 6 and SDK style projects. And we're actually working, I don't know if you saw the uh, .NET Conf Focus on Windows event, but yeah. Kathy Sullivan had a really good talk on the .NET upgrade assistant. So we're working on having that hook into .NET MAUI. So oh, that'd be that's cool. great. Yeah, it just does it all for you. Yeah. Um, but the controls will be the same. The um the the libraries and the nuggets you depend on will be the same. Actually, it'll feel more like developing kind of regular old .NET. Um, and one thing we say to companies that are vetting Xamarin is that you're not hiring a Xamarin developer. You're hiring a .NET developer. And it's going to be even more like that now because we're all going to be using the same base class library. Nice. And one of the things I remember seeing you and your teammate David talk about I think some time ago was I saw a demo where you were actually building an app inside of VS Code. And I saw it and I was like, really? Like, I'm going to be able to build desktop, mobile, some of these cross platform client side UIs in, in VS Code. And I thought that was ridiculously exciting. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The VS Code situation is just so cool. And I, I learned how to code in VS Code. I mean, it came out when I was in college, or I guess yeah. it, the first, yeah, and I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Um, yeah. And the great thing about .NET is it's got this really powerful CLI support. So you can do .NET build and watch and run and whatever you want to do on the CLI. Um, and your NuGet restores and all that. And then, of course, Visual Studio Code has C-sharp extensions. And um, XAML is a little bit more ingrained, I think, into Visual Studio proper VS 2019, sure. but you can still do XAML development absolutely in VS code. And so we're just making it barrier free to do that. Um, of course, if you want like the Android SDK install experience that you get now in Visual Studio and kind of this one click, make an emulator and deploy it for me and do all of my targets and all that stuff. And I don't have to fool around with manifests or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. VS is where you're going to do that. But if you're someone who's really comfortable with command line, um, or you maybe already are developing an Android Studio and you kind of have that Android SDK management and manifest stuff there, VS Code is going to be a great option for you. So, right. And that, yeah. that kind of leads into the next question that I was going to ask you was from a deployment and a development perspective, like can I expect features like, you know, deploy to my phone or like local debugging on like the phone that I have right next to me and hot reload and some of these other things that we've had the community speak about and, and seen in some... Um, you know, in Xamarin Forms today, like, can we expect to see that as well in Maui? Yes, .NET Maui is going to have all and more of what you see with Xamarin Forms today. And to be clear, like most of that is going to stay in Visual Studio, just because it is hard to build 
um, some of the things into VS Code. But in Visual Studio, you will get all of your XAML hot reload. We're working on like a C Sharp and .NET kind of style hot reload for your code behind and your business logic. We are um, porting over, I guess not porting over, but we're making sure that iOS hot restart, so the ability to deploy to a physical iPhone without having a Mac in the loop, that's going to work with .NET MAUI. Um, nice. And of course, all the same IntelliSense and IntelliCode and smart refactorings and, and the great work that you get when it comes to .NET all up productivity and VS all up productivity that's going to apply too. So super exciting. Nice. Lots, of, lots of things going on, lots of moving parts. <laughs> Nice. And I don't know if you're planning this, but I'd really look forward to doing like .NET new MAUI and just having like the CLI scaffold out like a new, you know, mobile application for me. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yes. I saw it. Someone sent me a video of them doing that the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Um, and it's all going to be from a single project. I mean, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're a Xamarin developer now, like you have a .NET standard project for Xamarin forms or your shared code. Then you have a Xamarin Android project, a Xamarin iOS project, and we're smushing them all into one project, which is going to make it so much easier. You don't have to worry about having multiple copies of your images to deploy to each of the different devices or operating systems. Like it's all just in one place. So .NET New Maui is going to spit out one beautiful project for you that you can do everything in. And yeah, it's going to be really fun. That's interesting because now I'm kind of wondering, like you mentioned, like what does that shared code scenario look like, right? Because I'm guessing one, I'm guessing we're gonna have new TFMs, right? Like new target mm -hmm. framework monikers, but I'm also guessing it'll be .NET standard 2.0 or 2.1 or some version of that, right? So I can pull in my NuGet packages and things of that nature that I'm, I'm used to. But then I'm also guessing, again, like as I target like these different devices and things of like things like that, Am I going to have to write my platform specific code in like a separate project? Like, will I have like my Maui project dot windows and a my Maui project dot Mac OS and iPad and iPhone and those types of things? Or do you think it'll be a way that I could kind of have that in one place and kind of just conditionally select based on some type of tag or API or something? Yeah, that's an awesome question. I mean, currently the model is you have like your my Xamarin app dot Mac or whatever. And we're not going to break that. So if you mm -hmm. still want to do things that way, that's totally fine. But we're also looking at kind of different levels of uh, platform-specific codeness, I guess, if codeness is a mm -hmm. word, in your Maui project. Um, so within your XAML, you can still use on platform, which is a feature we have in Xamarin Forms, which is super powerful. It's just open tag, on platform, iOS, purple, Android, green. Great. Call it a day. Um, but we're also going to enable if defs. So if you're if def Android, if def iOS, if def Windows, Mac, you can change things there. Mm -hmm. Then we're also working on in the single project. Um, we're still kind of debating whether we want it to be based on a naming convention or based on like where you put the file. But for example, you could have like a Bluetooth adapter .android.cs and a Bluetooth adapter .ios.cs, and that could do different things under the hood for those platforms, and they'd all stay in that shared project. Um, yeah, we have, a, I mean, we have a lot of customers today who like splitting it up by platform, but we also have mm -hmm. a lot of customers who like splitting it up by functionality. Mm -hmm. So they would rather have a Bluetooth folder in the shared project that says Android Bluetooth, iOS Bluetooth, and call it a day. I mean, we want to make sure all those scenarios are kind of supported and, and work really well. Nice. So then I'll have some flexibility with how I architect my project based on like whatever it is like my business needs happen to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Now, I'm kind of wondering today, I know .NET MAUI is still like in progress, right? Like we're still working on it and we're still, you know, figuring out what the tooling and the dev experience is going to look like. How could a community get involved today? Like I know Xamarin Forms was open source and they had, you know, there was Git repos and Gitter channels and all kinds of stuff. Like what does a community um, input today look like for .NET MAUI? Yeah, awesome question. I have a slide, if we can pop that up for a second, with some links. Um, they might be helpful. There's a lot of different places we can follow things going on right now. First of all, like Maui is on the .NET GitHub. It's no longer in the Xamarin org. We've moved into the .NET GitHub organization. So that's very exciting. Uh, we have a Discord. You're more than welcome to join and chat with the team there. The Discord is really kind of for our early adopters who are like, you know, going to be looking at how the code is written and making comments on the architecture and all that stuff. Um, and then we've also just recently released some .NET 6 mobile samples. So those are the first like real 
places that you can pull down Maui bits and like run a Maui solution and a Maui sample app and all that stuff, um, yeah. which is really, really exciting. And um, if you look at the .NET 6 preview two blog post that Rich Lander wrote, there are a bunch of different things in there um, on, on ways to get started with the .NET 6 previews. One of the exciting things that we highlighted the .NET theme that Maui is really the, the, the cornerstone, the key feature of. So um, there's a lot of info in that blog post. It's, just, it's an amazing blog post if you haven't seen it. But uh, if you Google .NET 6 preview 2 blog, it'll pop right up. Nice. And then we'll make sure we add the show links to in the description. So if anyone wants to go ahead and, and check, take a look and, and read it, um, they'll be able to do that too. Perfect. So between now and .NET 6, like what are some of the things that we can expect to see, you know, before uh, before November, before .NET 6 comes out? Yeah. Um, as the previews continue to roll out, so we're at preview two right now, and we'll have many more previews to come throughout the summer and, and the early fall. We'll continue to add more features. And the way we're kind of looking at it is that Right now, the previews are for like our, our hardcore Xamarin fans who want to go in and see how the rendering is different or see how uh, you know how the, the code base is going to look. And then the next couple of previews are for people who want to try like a file new Maui app. And they'll be like, oh, like file new Maui. Let me see how this works. Oh, cool. It works on my iPhone. It works on Mac. It works on Windows. Great. Everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. And then the last couple of previews are where we're really going to start focusing on the migration story. So that's like late summer, early fall, roughly, and, and it's currently March 2021. So like six months down the line, we'll look at taking your existing Xamarin Forms code base and migrating that over to .NET MAUI. Nice. I remember, I think like I mentioned, a couple of years ago, I used to be like into Xamarin Forms and then I, I you know, I came over to the dark side and started doing more web stuff. <laughs> but, you know, now that MAUI's coming out, I'm getting a little excited again to start writing desktop mobile, you know, um, applications again. So I'm really interested to see like what that developer experience would be. And also for me as a person that's used to like Razor and like like that type of markup, like creating those that kind of components based like UI, like I'm really interested to see how some of that translates over for me. So I could be kind of like you said, like I can just be a .NET developer and regardless of writing, you know, server side things or client side things, I should be able to like leverage my skills and create something really cool. Yeah, one of the coolest parts of Maui, I think, is, and I, I mentioned this like briefly at the beginning, but if you have a Blazor, an existing Blazor web app, you can create a new Maui app and then open a Blazor web view tag and stick your existing Blazor code base in it and like you're off to the races. You can That's continue amazing. to, yeah, it's just, it's it's super incredible. So we really want, you know, the .NET ecosystem and platform to feel like a, no matter what kind of programming model you like, you can build for anything. Awesome. Well, hey, Maddie, that's that's that sounds amazing. Um, if folks again they wanna they wanna learn a little bit more about Maui, I'm guessing kind of like what you said before, like head over to the GitHub repo. Um, you shared those links as well for the Discord channel, and I'm guessing folks can reach out to you as well on social media if they wanna you know send you some feedback directly and just kind of figure out what's going on, right? Yep, absolutely. Tweet me anytime. I mostly respond. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Maddie, thank you so much for coming on, and then thank all of you for watching. This has been another episode of the On.NET Show, where we are starting to take our journey over into .NET Maui. Yay, thank you.